Welcome back to One on One with Bruce Garrett. Pleased to be joined today by my old friend and compatriot from TSN 1200, the legendary color analyst of the Ottawa Senators, Gord Wilson. Gord, as we speak today... Um, yes. Listen, first, can I interrupt and just say how thankful I am to be alerted to my phone when the phone rang and I got asked to do this. <laughs> I, I, I thought, okay, well... Weeks have gone by since this wonderful show has started, and I'm not on the guest list, but I'm glad I didn't miss the call. Well, you know, like Dean, three other people turned us down. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but you know what? We have just returned, Gord, from a, a, yeah. a State of the Union address from uh, General Manager, President of Hockey Operations, Steve Stales, who sounds to me like, Gord, he's prepared to stay the course here. Um this team has an eight, nine, and one record. Where do you believe they're at? I think they're at an eight, nine, and one record. I think they're yeah. a 500 team right now. And, yeah. you know, sadly, it's getting close to a point in the season where um, you're going to be described as you are what your record indicates. Yeah. And 500 does not get you into the playoffs. 82 points won't get this team into the playoffs. I do believe, though, if they can find a way, and this is a huge if, if they can find a way to string some games together here where they get more wins than losses, they have an opportunity. And it's presenting itself right now, Bruce. You just have to look at the standings today and see that the Boston Bruins, who just changed their coach, just fired a really good coach, um, the Bruins are struggling. The Buffalo Sabres aren't where the Buffalo Sabres thought they would be. The Montreal Canadiens. No, the opportunity. The Red Wings. The Red Wings as well. Philadelphia. You should not lose to teams like the Philadelphia Flyers. Teams that finished ahead of you in the standings, but you think are beatable teams, you have to beat them then. If you think you're a better team and you, and you think you can beat them, prove it. And they haven't proven that yet here, but the time is getting close in the season where if they don't start proving it, then they're, we're all going to say, Bruce, well, they are what they are. You know, and, and, and Gord, as we speak today, and look, uh, they've lost three straight. Um, they have a, a myriad of, of issues, and I think number one starts with their goaltending, but I, I believe in the past that I'm, I'm the first to blame the goalie, and I'll be the last to blame the goalie because I, I think that, Goaltenders can cover up a lot of your issues. Yep. But do you think the move for Linus Allmark has maybe been more difficult than than maybe you, I, or anybody else thought? Million dollar question, right? And only he'd be able to answer it. Um, he certainly has said all the right things. And certainly yep. prior to the struggles on the ice, he was saying all the right things. I thought, and I'll be first in line to say I was – a huge proponent of this signing and still believe it. Same here. Okay? I'm You're, with you. 100%. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, just look at his numbers. And, Not alone, for sure. And, and I also believe in what the general manager said. There's been vast improvement, drastic yeah. improvement in defensive zone play, right? But there have still been moments in this team's game. And Steve brought up a very good point today and one that I, I, I worked with uh, somebody at TSN Stats last year to get some information on just how many times this team has given up a goal after either A, they'd scored, or if the other team had scored within a minute or two. And they led the league. This was late in the season last year, and Steve brought it up today. So they're obviously very aware of the adversity and how it affects this team when it happens quickly. And it's got to be addressed, right? And they, they've identified it as an issue. Like 35 seconds after Tim Stutzla scored last night to tie a, a winnable game. Okay, you didn't get off to a great start. Thomas Shabbat says, yeah, I wasn't ready to play. Good for you if we're admitting that. Thank you very much. Shame on you for not being ready to play. It happens, right? But 35 seconds after Tim tied it up. And it's a new hockey game. The slate is cleaned. They give up a goal. Boom. Boom. And then they take a penalty and they give up another goal on a five on three power play. And, and that's the adversity that Steve is talking about. And, and look at, obviously he does his homework. He's, he's an astute general manager here and has done his homework. It's not happened just a few times this year. 
and it has, it's happened a league leading number of times last year and probably the year before that as well. So this is a pattern. This has gone on. And um, unless it's corrected, the team is going to continue to flounder at that 500 record mark, I think. Well, and it, it can be difficult uh, because of it. Like we, we say they're young players, Gord, but they have all, some of them have been in that room a few years. And you can't help but think there's a feeling when they let in a bad goal or the a goal on the first shot of the game, you know, 61 seconds in or whatever it was last night. After, or it was three minutes last night. They had a good start last night, okay? You can't help but think the feeling on the be- that bench is like, oh, my God, here we go again. Four words, Bruce. You can eliminate the OMG, right? Four words. Here we go again. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I-, I-, I know. And uh, obviously, with the goaltending struggles that they had last year, where Corpusello and or Anton Forsberg were susceptible to giving up a goal within the first two shots or on the first two shots, you could see it. it there was a there was a very tangible of of um, a very visible sinking on the bench. You could see shoulders shrug. You could. I mean, it was and and it's human nature, right? And if it happens once, okay, we live with it. It's adversity. Let's let's tackle it. Let's head it uh, hit it head on. And then it happens again. And then it happens again. And you see a pattern, right? And. All of a sudden, it's, oh, here we go again. Well, the here we go again has kind of carried over a little bit into this year's game. And it's got to be stopped and stopped soon. And I think when Linus finds his game, and I'm confident that he will, my own personal thought is he's just too good a goaltender, technically sound. Um, Sometimes you can get into your own head. And I think right now there's a possibility that it is, you know, the game is in his head and just go out and play. Just be the natural goaltender that you are because he plays the game. He's very athletic. He's technically sound. But the combination of the two allows him to be an athlete and stop the puck, not just that technical robotic style that some goaltenders have. You know, I think we both believe in it because we've talked about it. I think we both believe that this team is better. Yep. I guess, how do you, you can't flip a switch and be consistent. And I think this has been the conversation we've had with Travis Green all season, Gord, is you can't flip a switch and be consistent. But what, in your opinion, could make this team a, quote, consistent team that wow. wins on a regular basis, that wins, that wins three of four or wins three of five, you know? The ability to not deviate from focusing in on the process. Okay. That would be ingredient number one. Find the ability to to be a process-driven team. It took Jacques a while. Jacques coined the phrase, focus on the process, not the end result. And it's got to be on a shift-by-shift basis, Bruce. And if it's not... And if they deviate a little bit from the process, they tie the hockey game at one last night. There's a deviation from the process. And the next thing you know, it's now a scoreboard driven process. We have to score next. Now we have to score again next. Now we, okay, stick to the game plan, stick to the process. And clearly, right, we're not in the locker room. We're not on the ice, but clearly it's the most, and this core has been around a while. It is the most difficult thing for this team to embrace. Process driven. It's easy to say. It took Jacques a while for his young club to get process driven. And then all of a sudden, the results started to come. We've seen it, Bruce. Look, yeah. Guy Boucher. We, we, we can quote Guy. We've lived it. We have lived it, Bruce. Okay. Yeah. But until they actually do, and the mindset is do not. Get scoreboard driven here, process driven, process driven, process driven until it's embedded in their brains. And then they don't worry about it, Bruce. Then they go out and just play. And when, we, when, we, when we've seen them go out and just play, guess what happens? They get a dominating performance against the Boston Bruins. They get a dominating performance against the Toronto Maple Leafs. They blew the Philadelphia Flyers out of the water with the exception of bad goaltending. 
Yeah. You know, it's interesting because uh, as we get ready to wrap up here, there's oh. they there is I, Dean was on like 20 minutes longer than that. So anyway, no, okay. No, I think we kept Dean 12 to 14 minutes. Oh, no, okay. um that uh, Tim Peel, different oh, story. My god. Oh no, my that was, by the way was a great episode. That was <laughs> outstanding. No, ser- in all seriousness. Yeah, no, he was fantastic. Right? Yeah. But one thing is they've got an opportunity in front of them. Uh <laughs> there is Thomas Shabbat said said it after the after the loss of the Oilers. There's lots of racetrack left, but we need to see, oh. like you say, Gord. We need to kind of see them turn that now into reality. They had four miles of highway ahead of them going into last night's game. Okay, just go through those four miles easily and come out on top over 500. Right, these four games. Yeah. Mile one is done, and they lost, and they lost in a not so fashionable way. Yeah. So they've got three more miles of highway here to prove that they can get it done. And these are, to me, uber important games for the Ottawa Senators. These next three, and they're not going to be easy. Vegas, Vancouver, and Calgary. There won't be an easy night whatsoever. Twenty games into the season, couple of quick hitters for a year. Who's been your biggest surprise? Uh, pleasant or disappointing? Pleasant. I'm going to say disappointing. Okay. Jake Sanderson. Yeah. Yep. He, he, he has struggled. Yep. Yep. Jake Sanderson has been a surprise. Okay. Uh, pleasant surprise. Um, I will say um, the 200-foot game of Tim Stutzla. Okay. I think, he's, I think he's far more committed to playing in his own end, and I and I think he's it's 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 catching on. You're going to steal my next question then, because I was going to say, who's who do you think has been their MVP? Because I think Tim has. If 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 you ask me, uh, I think yeah, I I think yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Could, yeah uh, I, I guess that's fair to say. I think it changes from night to night. Okay. Right. Um, if Brady Kachuk can duplicate what he did in Boston in the three-two overtime win, twelve hits, stops yeah. and starts, just a dominating performance. And he is their heart and soul. And he is their heart and soul. Yeah. And last night he wasn't. Did, what we've seen, Gordon. We're probably just. I mean, we're probably going around in circles here, but what we've seen with this team is when their best players are the best players. Yeah. They're usually pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, real pleasant surprise that I would also add, Nick Jensen. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, wonderful well, think, person off the ice and a wonderful uh, uh, player on the ice. Well, and I think, you know, you've, you've got to give Steve Stales credit for that deal. Like, because oh, they wanted someone to stabilize Thomas Shabbat. And no, he wasn't very good against the Oilers, but he he was in a pretty good stretch of very good games before that. Hundred percent, Bruce. Far better uh, than uh, than worse, right? He's had far more better games and and standout games than he has bad ones, without question. Well, Gord, Long season, I know, as he says. Yeah, I know one thing. I've had a far better episode with you on than. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> that well, I, I would have. Some, I if you take... didn't join me. <laughs> And that was that was cutting it close. I'm a little the dogs are a little disappointed here because I got in and I raced to the phone here to get it hooked up and they got neglected here. So they're dying to see old dad. And I just want to take a very quick moment to thank Rob for for producing all of this. Unsung well, hero. You take your dogs for a walk and I'm don't, gonna Don't say walk, Bruce. Here they come. <laughs> I'm gonna just type a story. Uh, well, that's good to know. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Gord Wilson, legendary color analyst of the Ottawa Senators on TSN 1200. And let me point out one last thing. The man who was between the benches on the new RO before <laughs> anybody thought of going between the benches. Yep. Eddie, Eddie Milliken's brilliance there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Gord. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Bruce.